Welcome to the Diagnostic Endoscopy Centre at St Vincent's Clinic. I'm Jan Elkin Roberts, the Chief Executive Officer. Established over 25 years ago, we were one of the first dedicated endoscopy units in New South Wales. Each year we provide accurate diagnostic services for over 8,000 patients and perform almost 12,000 procedures. To make your visit as straightforward and stress-free as we can, Kate Turner, our Nurse Unit Manager, will take you through a step-by-step -step tour of the centre so you'll know what to expect from your arrival to your discharge home on the same day. Then, Dr Carolyn Barriol, consultant gastroenterologist, will explain some of the important medical requirements you need to be aware of prior to your admission. Hi, I'm Kate, Nursing Unit Manager. When you arrive at St Vincent's Clinic, take the lift to Level 6 to the Endoscopy Centre. Please present to the Endoscopy Centre front desk, where one of our friendly administrative staff will take your paperwork. Then, our admitting nurse will take you into an examination room, where your blood pressure and weight are checked. You'll be asked a few background medical questions to ensure you are fully prepared for your test. When your admission is complete, we will take you into the changing rooms. We'll give you the key to a locker where your valuables will be safely stored. Please remember, it's really helpful if you bring only essential items with you. We'll then ask you to remove your clothes, put on a medical gown and theatre booties on your feet. Once you're changed, we'll take you to your bed and the anaesthetist will come and speak to you shortly. Hi, how are you going? I've, um, I've read your health questionnaire and I can see you're well. Just wanted to make sure you've had nothing to eat or drink. The anaesthetist will wheel you into the procedure room where you will meet the nurse who will be assisting the gastroenterologist or surgeon during your test. Hi George, my name is Linda, I'm the Hi, nurse Linda. that's looking after you today, how are you? Good. You also need a little bit of oxygen. And then a number of monitors will be placed to measure your heart rate and oxygen level before and during the test. So this just goes up your nose. To prepare you for your sedation, you will be given oxygen, delivered by small nasal prongs or a mask. The oxygen is odourless, but some patients will sense a slight plastic odour from the tubing. So it's time to sign your medical consent form now. So we'll just check that that's... You'll need to sign a medical consent form before you receive your anaesthetic, and your doctor will be pleased to answer any questions regarding your procedure. Next, you'll be given the sedation through a small needle placed in the arm by your anaesthetist. From this point, you will not recall anything more of the procedure as you'll now enter a deep sleep. Be assured that your anaesthetist will be monitoring you all through your procedure. Your endoscopy test will take anywhere between 15 and 45 minutes, depending on the nature and complexity of your procedures. When the test is complete, you'll be wheeled out into the recovery area and you'll wake up gradually over the next 30 minutes or so. You'll still be breathing oxygen through the mask or nasal prongs when you wake up. The recovery nurse will check your observations and then provide you with some well-deserved light refreshments. When you're ready to get up and around, we'll take you back into the change room so you can get dressed into your street clothes. Next, you'll have a consultation with your doctor who will explain the findings of your investigations. You'll be provided with a written report to take home and your GP will also receive a copy of the report. We will also have your account ready for settlement. As we are contracted with many health funds, most of our patients experience no out-of-pocket expenses. We will provide you with an estimation of fees prior to your treatment with us. You may be asked to make a follow-up appointment with your specialist or GP. You can make this appointment when you check out with the admin staff on departure. Most importantly, you'll need to be accompanied home from the clinic by a responsible adult. You cannot go home alone and you cannot drive home. So please make sure you have a family member or a friend available to escort you home. A few frequently asked questions by our patients are, how much time should I allow for my clinic visit? And please plan a stay at between three and four hours, depending on your test. And because some patients feel a little lightheaded or unsure on their feet, we recommend you take it easy for the rest of the day. Another question we often get asked is, can I bring a mobile phone? Yes, but please turn it off once you're admitted. Women often ask, can I wear makeup? The answer is just lipstick, because when you're sedated, any makeup on or near the eyes or cheeks can cause an irritation. Hello, I'm Dr. Carolyn Barriol. I'd like to talk with you about getting prepared for your test and we'll share some important information about your medications. Let's start 
with the preparation. The preparation requirements for each test are explained clearly in the literature you have received. Please read this carefully as soon as you receive it. Patients having an endoscopy, otherwise known as a gastroscopy, will need to fast. That means no food or drink are to be consumed for six hours before the test. Patients having a colonoscopy will need to review the preparation instructions well in advance of the test. The reason is that you will need to make adjustments to your diet for a few days prior to your test, mainly avoiding seeds and nuts for three days. You will also need to purchase the bowel preparation kit in advance. Details of the timing of the bowel prep are explained clearly for you in our brochure. But I would like to stress the importance of maintaining very good hydration the day before you come into the clinic for your procedure. For 24 hours before your colonoscopy, you will be asked to drink clear fluids only. These must include nutritious fluids such as chicken or vegetable stock, hydrolyte, bonox, energy drinks, jellies and juices. We find salty fluids maintain hydration better. And this means you're less likely to feel washed out or headachy on the day of your test. Those having a colonoscopy or a combined endoscopy and colonoscopy are able to continue drinking fluids up until four hours before the test. If you're feeling dehydrated or you have a headache, you may take Panadol with a sip of water on the morning of the test. Now let's talk about medications. You may take your regular prescribed medications with a small sip of water as usual on the day of the test. This is particularly important for blood pressure and asthma medications, which you will need to continue. Blood thinners containing aspirin, like Cartia and Asterix, if prescribed by your doctor, should be continued as usual. For patients at risk of heart attack and stroke, for example, stopping these medications is too dangerous. If you have not been prescribed aspirin by your doctor, don't take aspirin for the week prior to your test. The same goes for fish oil and krill oil, which should also be stopped one week beforehand. Other blood thinners such as warfarin, Pradaxa, Eliquis, Xarelto, Plavix and Iscava should not be stopped without medical advice. This is particularly relevant if you have a vascular stent, atrial fibrillation, or a valve replacement. You must discuss your blood thinners with either your cardiologist, gastroenterologist or general practitioner. Now if you've not been given instructions regarding these medications, please phone us at the Diagnostic Endoscopy Centre at least one week before your procedure. We will give you the correct advice about the steps you need to take. If you're taking iron tablets, these also should be stopped one week before the test. Lastly, Many patients with diabetes or insulin resistance take a tablet called metformin. We advise you stop taking this medication 24 hours before a colonoscopy, as it can promote dehydration, especially in those with kidney problems. If you take insulin, you must discuss your insulin and fluid requirements well before your test with your specialist. Your test should be scheduled for the first morning procedure. And I'd like to conclude by emphasising the importance now of getting home safely. After your procedure, it's essential that you're escorted home by a responsible adult. You're legally not allowed to drive a motor vehicle on the day of your test. We also advise that you do not drink alcohol or sign important documents on the day. You may feel tired and relaxed for the rest of the day and a further sleep at home is encouraged. You should then feel normal and able to return to your usual activities the following day. If you aren't sure about any aspect of your preparation, your medications or your actual procedure, please call us at the Endoscopy Centre on 02 83 82 6622. On behalf of the team here at the Diagnostic Endoscopy Centre, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you.